Correspondent with DNA. Basically, our first question, uh, first question is that how disappointed are you with your uh, with the visa denial to UK and uh, Canada for your recent speeches or the recent uh, lectures that were supposed to be conducted? Rather than being disappointed, I was shocked. I was shocked, and more shocked after reading the reasons why they have passed an exclusion order on me. And though, as you may be aware. The first time that the UK media reported about me because uh, I was supposed to go on a lecture tour and supposed to give three talks in the prestigious three venues on 25th, 26th and 27th of June. The first talk was in Sheffield Arena in Sheffield, the second in Wembley Arena in London and third talk in Birmingham LG Arena. That's the NEC. So publicity was on the way and the organizers were publicizing my visit. So the first article that came against me in London was on 30th of May. 2010, on a Sunday, in the newspaper Sunday Times, saying that preacher of hate led into Britain, calling me a hate monger and giving quotations out of context, and which is common. I being popular, there are many people who misquote me, so that didn't really bother me much. Fine, sir. But I was shocked to receive a call from the Deputy High Commission of UK in Bombay, saying that there's an exclusion order passed against you by the Home Secretary, Theresa May. So that was the letter to be corrected, so I sent my manager and he corrected the letter. And when I found the reasons that they said that your coming to UK is not conducive, or it's not appropriate, it's not good for the people of UK, and they quoted four passages from my talks, from my speeches. And going through these four passages, I was shocked at the reasons. Because when the media did quote me out of context, saying that Dr. Zakir Naik says that every Muslim should be a terrorist. So the organizers approach the Home Office and they give them the context, etc. So here when they pass the exclusion order, even the context was mentioned. Anyone who reads context, he doesn't have to be intelligent, he doesn't have to be someone well-versed with the media or law to know what the context is and what memory message is. And I'll read it for you. The Home Secretary has considered whether in light of this approach you should be excluded from the UK after careful consideration on 16 June 2010. She personally directed that you should be excluded from the UK on the ground that your presence here would not be conducive to the public good. The Home Secretary notes that you have made the following statements amongst others. As far as terrorist is concerned, this is inverted commas, as far as the terrorist is concerned, I tell the Muslims that every Muslim should be a terrorist. What is the meaning of the word terrorist? Terrorist by definition means a person who terrorizes. When a robber sees a policeman, he's terrified. So for a robber, policeman is a terrorist. So in this context, every Muslim should be a terrorist to the robber. Every Muslim should be a terrorist to each and every anti-social element. I'm aware that terrorist more commonly is used for a person who terrorizes an innocent person. In this context, no Muslim should ever terrorize a single innocent human being. So this in context, I'm asking, what does it mean? It means that a Muslim should not tear the innocent human being. At the same time, the Muslim should behave like a policeman and terrorize the antisocial element. So the main crux of my thing was, I'm aware that terrorist more commonly is used for a person who terrorizes an innocent person. In this context, no Muslim should even terrorize a single innocent human being. So she is preventing me to come to UK because I'm saying no Muslim should terrorize a single innocent human being. So what is the message? Like that, there are many other passages. What I object that she knew very well that I'm going to challenge this in the court. So she purposely did not quote what the media had quoted. She gave the context. Because if I give the context to the court, it will be dismissed within a few minutes. She gave the context so that she may tell the court, yes, even in context, I will prove it is wrong. But what I'm trying to tell that to the media when she gave a press 
release. Or when she spoke to the media, she didn't give this full passage. Why? She only mentioned that Dr. Zakir Naik is excluded because he said every Muslim should be a terrorist. So these are double standards. Yeah. Furthermore, I'll quote the passage is what she has objections on. One other passage that she objected on, one of the four passages, there's inverted commas quoting me. How can you ever justify killing innocent people? I'm saying this. But in the same breath, as condemning those responsible, we must also condemn those responsible for the deaths of thousands of innocent people in Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon, unquote. As reported by the Manchester Evening News, 21st August 2006, as part of your speech you gave at the Expo Islamic Conference in Manchester. Now, Leva said what the context is. I'm asking you what is wrong in this statement. So she's objecting on me saying, we must also condemn those responsible for the deaths of thousands of innocent people in Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon. It's not any normal people. There may be bad people also in Iraq, Afghanistan. I said we should condemn the thousands of innocent people killed in Iraq, Afghanistan, Lebanon. So what is wrong in this? But yet I went to see the context. And when I saw the context, without context also it is very clear. When I read the context, it gives me a bigger shock. When I went to that, before this, there was a thing that came in the Manchester News. This is, I went to the site and got this news. What she quoted was right. But before that, it mentioned, same, I'm quoting the same newspaper, paragraph before the quote that she gave. However, Dr. Zakir Naik, described by organizers as the most sought after Muslim public speaker in the world, criticized the actions of New York, London, and Bombay bombers. And then I said, how can you ever justify killing innocent people? He said, but in the same breath as condemning those responsible, we must also condemn those responsible for the deaths of thousands of innocent people in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Lebanon. That means first I condemned 9-11 in New York, 7-7 in London, 7-11 in Bombay. But I said that why are Muslims keeping quiet besides condemning the deaths of these innocent people? You should also condemn the deaths of the innocent people that has taken place in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Lebanon. So does she mean to say that one European or one Britisher dying is something great and thousands of innocent Afghanis die, it doesn't carry any weight. So is this human rights? So she's preventing me from coming to the country because I'm saying even condemn those people who have killed innocent people. Innocent! So I want to know what message is the UK government trying to pass? Don't they want the peace to spread in UK? So they're preventing a person who wants to spread peace throughout the world, including UK, and project me as a preacher of hate, as a person who hates women, all out of context. So you're planning to challenge them? Yes, surely, because we feel this is not a legal decision. This is a political decision taken by the new government. Mm. And surely, though it says very clearly, the exclusion order says that you have no right for appeal. So what we check, that means we cannot go to the lower court but we can challenge for a judicial revision called a writ petition okay. in our language. So we are filing a judicial revision okay. in the High Court directly. But we don't want to be like them. They don't give me any time. They don't discuss with me. So I told my lawyers that, you know, we are Muslims. We don't want to just be in a hurry. So yesterday evening, my lawyers gave them a notice to the Home Secretary okay. as well as to the Deputy High Commission yeah. that your reason for banning is illogical, unreasonable, blah, 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 and various reasons. And they said clearly that these evidences that you say are all of 2006 and before that. And your visa was of 2008, given in 15th of July 2008, two years after this event took place. So after this event took place, two years later you gave the visa, and now you are saying that you want to review, and you're cancelling the visa which was the five years visa given, valid for another three years till 2013. So it's an unjust decision. So to avoid that, what they did, they wrote in this letter that we have been thinking since three years so that, you know, they know I'm going to go to the court. They know my talks, they know me very well, they know that I'm a messenger of peace, they know very well. But they know I'm going to the court. So to prevent embarrassment, they made a last clause. What they said? This original letter. There is no right of appeal against the Home Secretary's decision to exclude you from the United Kingdom. The decision is reviewed after no later than three years. On the basis of exclusion, your visit has been revoked. So how long was your visa for? Five, five, five years. Five years. No, no, that means they have been guided with the legal team that don't quote out of context, tomorrow you will be challenged. So they give the context. They have been told that if you have been visa, 
if you are caught in 2006, it will not carry weight. So they put this clause, not knowing very well that they are digging their own grave. You know why? Because even I am a debater. What they fail to realize, there are different types of visas given. Six months, two years, five years. Five years means there is no... We have checked up for sure. If they were doing research on me for three years, my question to them is, if they are doing research since three years, on 2008, 15th of July, why did they give me a five years visa? They could have been okay. Just give a six months visa. And they have every right. This shows that this is a lie. This is a blatant lie. And if it's not a lie, giving a five years visa is a different status as compared to giving a six months visa or a two years visa. Initially, the first time I entered in 1993, they gave me six months. They didn't know me. Then they gave me two years visa. Then they gave me five years. Then again, five. that means they're sure. This man is a peaceful man, he's not going to cause any. So that means to defend themselves in court, they're putting some clauses, not knowing they're digging down grave. When did you apply for the 2008 visa and how soon did you get it? Just within, I don't, but we got within a few days. Within a few days. Within so few days. So 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 so. Who do you blame? You say that it's politically motivated. So who do you think is, uh, and who's trying to scuttle this? What I believe that because this government, you know, is a new government that has come into power recently, hardly one and a half months back. That is the conservative government. Previously, when they were in opposition, and this is my view, I may be wrong, this is my opinion. Previously, when they were in the opposition, they used to go against the ruling party, which is the normal case, most part of the world, always going against the ruling party. Saying that, you know, terrorism is there because they are promoting people who are spreading wrong message, etc. When they came to power, there was a movement by certain people, by the press. There was a David Leopard, who was known for writing such articles. He wrote this article and put pressure on the government that now you have come to power, why don't you stop Dr. Zakir Naik, who is a hate monger, who is a preacher of hate, who says this, blah, 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 all out of context. Our organizers presented to the Home Office, this is the case. They're not that they did not know. But it was now two things. If we allow him, we came to power on certain clauses, people will think that we are backtracking on our words. So it was a political decision. And if we ban him, they know I'm going to go to the court. It will be revised, but at least now we can save our face saying that we banned him, now the court gave him permission, so we are yet sticking to our principles. They prefer being ashamed in the High Court, inshallah, God willing. So we are very confident we'll win this case, unless, unless there's so much political pressure on the judicial system. But I personally have more faith in the judicial system of India and UK than on the politicians. Unless there is so much pressure of the politicians, the judicial system cannot take it, that's a different ballgame altogether. Otherwise, there is no reason why this order should not be revoked, and we are very confident. Nubiji Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ir Muni Mukta Adi bin Hatim radiallahu anhu hute burni to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bula chan Ek tukru khejur sadaka kure hule ho Tumra jahannam thikhe beche tha ko Tumhi jidhi ta na pao Tabi ek tiri uttam kotha dara hule ho Sahih Bukhari ashtam khando Shishtha charub thai Hadi shonka chaja teish सफलता अर्जन करी अर्थनीति परवर्ती अनुष्ठान पीस टी बांगल् What about Canada? Why do you think that they just followed suit? See, Canada, we received a call from the Canadian embassy. I forgot the name of the person saying that, you know, please don't travel, your visa has been cancelled. I said, go and phone and ask them again, what is the reason? When we again phone, no one is picking up that phone call. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's a hoax, we don't know. Because when we are calling that number again, no one is picking up. It may be, may not be, but only verbally we were told. So, officially, there's a difference between cancelling a visa and there's a difference between exclusion order. So, no exclusion order, no ban so far, but verbally we were told. But, 
I told my manager, ask them what the reason is. Because this was given last year. It is more stronger. Omni, uh, last for year, Omni, yes. five years, okay. I applied for tourist visa. They gave me a worker visa. So I'm wondering, what is this worker visa? So while entering the country, I asked them, then why have you all given me a worker visa when I applied for a normal visa? So I told them I'm going for a conference. I never hide the reasons why I'm going for. Last year, in July 2009, I had gone to attend a conference of Journey of Faith. And same conference I'm going this time. But when I applied for a normal visa, they gave me a worker visa. Then they don't know, worker visa carry more weight. I mean, I'm not going to work there. But then someone told me there that worker visas carry more weight. It is more powerful than a visitor's visa. Five years there also. Previously, they gave me six months visa. So the first time, the Canadian government has given me a worker visa for five years. Of past. their own volition, not that you applied for. I didn't apply for it. Tourists. So I was objecting, why did you give? I don't do work there. No, 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 this carries more weight. So you're applying for what, one year? No. No, no gentle tourist. Gentle tourist. Gentle, gentle, gentle tourist. No, year, nothing. They have nothing. the option. They have the option. I've seen I've been to Canada so many times, so sometimes they feel like a bar hai. Like you say, they, they, do you want a five year? I said, no problem. Fine, you may have to pay a little bit more fee, no problem. What I applied for five years or two years, I don't know. But I didn't apply for a worker visa. What kind of visa do you have for US? US are normal, same tourist visa. No, no, 10 years. Ten years. Should, 10 years ago. The US visa I applied in 2002. 2002. And they were 10 no, years, 10 years. And they had no problem. So I obtained the visa in 2002 and it was valid till 2012. 12. 12, two years more. But all hand in gloves. Mm. <laughs> so it's nothing shocking for me. But you've been in and out of US quite a few times. Many times. Many times. Many times. Last... I've been going since 1993. Okay. To USA, to Canada since 1996. UK since 1993 for the past 15 years. I've gone more than 10 times. Given several lectures in the major cities of UK, in London, in Birmingham, in Manchester, in Bradford, in Cardiff, in Glasgow, attracting tens of thousands of people. And as the Manchester News said, the most sought after Muslim speaker in the world is myself. So this time, we were going for three venues. Sheffield Arena, Wembley Arena in London, LG Arena, NEC in Birmingham, all of these are prestigious and large arenas, and having about 15,000 people all of them. No, no. So you describe yourself as messenger of peace, not... Yeah, I don't want to use the messenger, but that was what you used in DNA today morning. Oh, is it okay? <laughs> it is called as votary of peace. I would say it as a person who promotes peace, because messenger in Islam means a person. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. You know, so I don't want anyone to misquote yeah. me. Yeah. You know, now in this age of media. Yeah, so yeah. I'm a person who <laughs> spreads peace. Sweet, yeah. So in that way, yes, I'm a person who spreads peace. I'm a peaceful person spreading peace and the message of peace, mm. and the message of the religion of peace. Now, where is West going in all that, you know, French government and this thing? I think the definition of secularism, you know, vis-a-vis -vis India, the way we practice and way we know, and probably it has come from them in a way, India democracy and secularism. India is a far secular country mm. than the Western world. India is a far democratic country than the Western world. You cannot compare. On the face of it, they say, as long as anyone who wants to go against the agenda, there's no democracy, there's no freedom of speech. And there's more of Islamophobia. Because today, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world, even in the Western countries. The fastest growing religion in USA is Islam. The fastest growing religion in Europe is Islam. The fastest growing religion in UK is Islam. So it's more of an Islamophobia. And I feel that knowing that the person who attracts the maximum crowd in the world. In India, when I give talks, there are hundreds of thousands of people attending. When I go abroad, tens of thousands of people, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, and I was in Colombo just a few weeks back, 50,000 people, a non-Muslim country. 50,000 people for a talk. And in my audience, more than 25% are non-Muslim. World over. More than anyone. Okay. World over. Okay. Fine, there may be certain occasions where the Muslims have kept a ticket and the non muslim may be less. But as a general, when we have in India, more than 25%, sometimes 35%. Sometimes a program exclusively for non muslim that's different, 100%. But in the large gathering that we have, in most parts of the world, especially in India, more than 25% of the audience is non muslim And even on the channel Peach TV, it is one of the unique religious channels where the viewers, more than 25%, are not belonging to that faith. Because my answers, I being a medical doctor by profession, coming from a medical background, coming from a scientific background, answering any question is easy. Answering convincingly is difficult. 
to have been known as replying to the allegations against Islam and removing misconceptions about Islam with reason, logic, and science, and with the comparative approach, quoting other scriptures. I believe more in talking about similarity rather than differences. So that's my speciality. And I quote scriptures, Bible, Bhagavad Gita, Veda, Quran, Hadith, but with references. So that gives irrefutable proof. But what they do, they cut paste my talks, put on the YouTube. How can a YouTube clipping be proof for any intelligent government? What I'm trying to say, I've been called by various different countries of the world. I've been called by heads of states, by many countries of the world, by the presidents, by the prime ministers, by the kings, by the sheikhs, by the rulers, and even Muslim and non-Muslims. I have met high officials, government officials, not only in India, but wherever I travel. So is the UK government trying to say that their intelligence is superior than all the other intelligence, and all the other countries are calling a person who promotes terror? What message are they trying to convey? I think it's a political agenda. And they really don't like the true message of Islam, true message of peace being spread in UK. This fastest growing religion, uh, it's... Uh... Statistics of different parts done by... Fine. I so, so much of conversion, uh, voluntary yes, conversion yes, is happening, yes, yes, obviously. Yes, so that must be... And this is statistics by Muslims. But why do you think so? I mean, they feel that it's a kind of a Islam, persecuted... Uh, according to me, hmm? Islam has the solution to the problems of the West. That's my thinking. That's what the person the from your... Islam has the problem to the solution of the world of humanity, not only of the West, but West is part of the world, of humanity. Islam has the solution. And when they say, like for example, the same UK media, even Canadian media saying that Zakir is a misogynist, a person who hates women. I'm asking a simple question. You know, for my talks, normally women come less. For me, the women come in large number. And after the talks, many of the non-Muslims, Alhamdulillah, they're accepting Islam, they're coming closer to Islam. Out of them, more women are accepting Islam. So if I'm a person who hates women, why are the non-Muslim women accepting Islam after my talk? Why do women in such large numbers come for my talk? That means what they're doing, they're picking some of my speeches out of context and maligning me. Like as we said in the beginning of the interview, which was not recorded, that, you know, I'm in headlines in the Canada news, and what is the new thing they've come up with? They're showing a clipping, and Dr. Zakir Naik is going to attend a news conference, blah, 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 blah. And here what he says, and they give a quotation. Point number one, beat your wife in such a way that no mark is left. Point number two, don't beat her on her face. And then they continue. And this is a person who hates women, you're not allowed. Now I'm asking a question. If you hear this, beat your wife such that no mark is left on her, don't beat on the face. What does it imply? That I'm a person who's advocating beating the woman. Yeah. Beat your wife. Like how we say, police go, why maro maro, likin mark no na chair, kunne nikal na chair. Now being a medical doctor, any person would say this person is a misogynist, including you. Only thing you have to click or just take a DVD where they're taking this quote from. It is basically a question I'm replying to a non-Muslim. Talking that, doesn't your Quran say beat the woman? So I say, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 34, that when you have disagreement with your wife, first tell her politely, then warn her, then stop sharing the bed. Then the Arabic word is, then you can do daraba means beat lightly. And if you so cross reference what the Prophet said, a person asked Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, companion of the Prophet, that what does it mean? He said it means like, Beating with a miswak, beating with a toothbrush. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Toothbrush. Mm. But not that you can beat hard. In modern terminology, I'll say beating with a hanky. Mm. Such that, point number one, no mark comes on the body. And you should not beat on the face. That means even if you beat with a handkerchief or with a toothbrush, beat in such a way that no mark comes. So if you read in context, but I say that no toothbrush also some are hard. So I said I would use today's terminology handkerchief. Quoting part of my answer, but out of context. Now I am asking you if I am saying the Quran says beat lightly means it's a symbolic beating. Such that with a toothbrush, such that 
no mark is left on the body such that you should not beat on the face. Now I'm asking you, am I telling the people to beat the wives? If you have disagreement, even if you have to beat her, beat her symbolically. But in the modern context, mm -hmm. particularly women, could say that, you know, do we have that liberty to do the same? Yes, that is the question that is asked to me. What I am saying, don't do that because, you know, God has made the man more stronger. If you use symbolic that way, then you make a retaliation. So I tell them, don't do that symbolic. Yes, you can protest other ways. But not this way, because if you do that, because, you know, as the Quran says in the starting of the same verse, that man is the support of the woman. Because God has given more power to man as compared to woman in terms of muscle power. But that doesn't mean that man is superior. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 228, that women have the same rights as those against men on terms equitable. But the men have a degree advantage, that means they have to be responsible in protecting and supporting the women. So if you hear my talk, there's a very famous talk of my women that is in Islam, where women flock to my talk. And they say, this person can present Islam very well. But the reason that they have a problem with me is because, as I told you, I am a person who gives the answer to reason, logic and science. And it is so logical in context, no one would disagree with the teachings of Islam. So what they are doing now, this man is getting popular, let's quote him out of context. And that's how they're presenting. I'm asking you a question. Suppose I read this letter. I'm sure Theresa May also has told to the press, Dr. Zakir Naik says, that every Muslim should be a terrorist. If I take that statement, every Muslim has a terrorist, and put it on the Canadian news, and say, Theresa May says that every Muslim should be a terrorist banner, will they banner? Will they? Will they banner? No. If I say in the US media that Theresa May has said that every Muslim, and it's a fact, she has said it. But I'm putting out of context. They will not believe me. No human being would believe. So why do they have double standards? They can take any of my clipping. Suppose today someone puts up a clipping in the YouTube saying Theresa May said, will they use that proof as evidence? Can you use a clipping of YouTube as an evidence? What has happened to the intelligence of UK? Allah or Ibadut Kore, Quran Ibn Hadis Eropur Amul Kore, Allah Pakar Bula Alamin Tadir Kesofol Kore, Ami Mutiur Rahman, Sheikh Mutiur Rahman Modani, Iki Kurle, Allah Pakarazi Haven, Dekun, Islamir, Istambo, Dekun, Islamir, Kutu Shamu, Kal Shonda Pastai, Apuno Shamprochar, Rad Barotai, Bangladesh, Peace TV Banglai. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nikah. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, that is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik. Dekhun. Ardhangini Natitangini. Prati Rabibar Rajshara Shaktai.